Hey, how you guys doing? Um, I am here to uh, basically give you a little primer on taking good quality field notes uh, for field camp. It's pretty important that you take good field notes. You will be graded partially on your field notes, but it's also a skill that you really want to have for the rest of your life, uh, especially if you're doing anything in the environmental field, uh, any kind of consulting, anything like that. Um, so all of you are going to get a field notebook like this, okay, um, if you haven't got it already. And uh, the first thing I want to point out is that on the cover right up here, it has my name uh, boldly, okay? Uh, and then I actually have a number after it, eight, because this is my eighth field notebook for this research area. And then I also have my name on the spine in big Sharpie marker, okay? This is so that we always know whose it is and also so you know which one it is. Uh, the other thing that we will often do is on the uh, inside first page right here, we will put in some text uh, that is a, a return address, like if lost, return to, uh, and have some kind of return address. Because if you lose your field book, it really sucks, because uh, that's some of your primary data. Um, and so you want to make sure that there's some way that you get it back if someone finds it. Um, I guess the one thing that I would really like to emphasize uh, with you guys is that Field books are used uh, in industry and in careers and jobs all the time uh, in the geological field. Um, and you might want to uh, think about this when you're taking notes, that field books can become legal documents for whatever company or group you're working with. So um, it's really important to take good quality notes um, that uh, can be interpreted. Um, and remember that you may not be the only one looking at them. Someone else may have to come back use your notes to follow on on the work that you've done in the past. So it's really important to be really clear. So I'm gonna go on uh, and show you some specifics um, of, of taking field notes that I think might be helpful. So um, I'm back here uh, with a view of one of my field books. Um, and I just wanna point out um, a couple of things uh, that are common uh, to most field books. I guess the first thing is notice that up here um, I have um, Whoops, up here I've uh, got page numbers. Usually I just uh, number every odd page in the upper right or lower right. Um, and uh, that's so that I can actually have them keyed to the table of contents at the beginning. Um, the next thing you notice is that at the beginning of every day, um, I will have a date. That's fairly important, right, that you have a date. Um, and then typically at the beginning, I have some kind of description of where I am, who I'm with. Uh, some people like to put something down here about the weather, uh, something that reminds them of the day. So this could be an entire page um, of material. So here I'm saying I'm out here with Eric, Sarah, and April. I'm doing a recon of a section, uh, and I have a question here, is it RBG, which I know is Rainbow Gardens. Um, I also have here the GPS unit that I'm using. I've written that down so that I know which GPS I'm working on in case that changes, because uh, often uh, we will be working uh, with the GPS. So this was, would be what I would call sort of what I would do at the beginning of each day, uh, just to have a little bit of time to kind of collect my thoughts. Uh, the next thing you're going to notice is that I personally, uh, and I find this to be fairly useful now that we have GPSs and they're so common, I like to organize uh, pretty much my whole uh, field book by waypoint. So WYPT is waypoint, and waypoint 95 is the waypoint number um, on the, the GPS unit that I'm using. So uh, waypoint 95 is where I'm sitting. These are the what are called UTM, Universal Transverse Mercator coordinates of that site. This is the easting and the northing. Um, this could be the latitude and longitude if you're using decimal degrees. Uh, it depends, but I always write these down just in case some Something happens to the GPS so that I have a written record of the specific location and these are accurate to within a couple of meters on the ground so uh, this allows me that if I lose the GPS or I have some problem downloading the data from the GPS I've got the actual coordinates right here uh, and then I might uh, just make some notes about that so I'm at the base of the section and in the TRC that I'm in conglomerates and then I notice another thing that's important 
is photos. If I'm taking photos, these will be the first five photos that I, that I took. Sometimes if I'm in the digital camera mode, I might take a picture of something weird and say, uh, photos start after picture of Tom picking his nose or whatever it is, okay? Um, and you can do that. Or if you have a way to indicate the photo frame number, you can put those on here too. Um, so you notice I have waypoint 96, uh, that this is a contact, waypoint 97, where I am, I'm in some kind of travertine material. Um, so notice just in, in general what I'm doing is keying everything to waypoints. So for instance, when you're in the field, if you take a strike and dip, you can take it and take a waypoint and take this, record the strike and dip information here, right? If you stop and you're trying to figure out where the hell you are or what units you're on, always take a waypoint and try and figure out the rocks you're standing on and put that in there. Notice I have contact between JA and TRC, base of TRC. I'm almost always saying this is where I am, right? And the rocks that I'm on. Because then at least if you come back in the field at the end of the day and you're not sure what rocks you are on, you can go back in your field book and look. So it's important to know what units you're on, why you're stopping, etc. cetera. Um, in this case, I was doing just a, it was a recon, so I wasn't doing any detailed measurements or anything like that. So this is what I this is kind of a, a sketched um, what I call a measured section of the entire um, uh, outcrop there, which is a much thicker outcrop. This is actually probably tens of meters of outcrop, and I actually messed up here in that I didn't put a scale here. Um, I remember the outcrop, so I have a pretty good idea of it. Um, but notice I put things like uh, photos eight and nine, photos ten through whatever. I have waypoints um, even on this section. So let me go to another page of my field notes. Um, this is from a different area, a different project. Again, um, I was, I'm doing what's called microbialite texturaliza textural characterization, whatever that is, right? Sarah and I will sample mesoscale structures for petrography. So this is why I'm out here, right? Um, keyed to waypoints, photos taken um, without, uh, um, with and without sample locations. So they're in Sharpie on the samples. So for instance, here I'm actually collecting data at specific points. Um, and this is, I'm bringing this page out to illustrate something that's really important. If I take a picture of something, I like to sketch um, the, uh, the, the photo, if I, or sketch what would be on the photo, um, particularly if I'm making, taking samples within here. So an X in this case is a sample. So X1, X2, X3, X4. Um, I have some description of what the material is like. And then if you go over to this page, you'll notice that I have descriptions of my photos. Um, X1, this is the sample number that I took, uh, or the samples that I took and our sample numbering scheme. Uh, so you can see that, right? Um, and one of them I said was from float, right? So I'm trying to be very careful about where my samples are from and how those sample locations are keyed back to the photos uh, so I can really know exactly where every photo is from and where every sample is from. Um, notice also our sample, our sample strategy, how we number them. 14 is the year. WB is for a location. WB means lo white basin, which you'll be in in project two. Uh, and then these are the sequential numbers, all right? Um, so that's an example. Again, everything's keyed to a waypoint. Um, and this is an example of using them for um, uh, uh, sample strategies. Um, it's also an example of sketching, using sketch as well. Notice right there, ruler, right? So we know the scale of the sketch. These are some more of those places where I was doing uh, samples, right? So you can see that I've drawn the feature, I say which photos, where the samples are from, etc. Another waypoint down here where I've moved on to something else and described what's there. Uh, and um, I, I can keep going on. Um, sometimes I'll make small maps, like this is an area where we were doing very detailed sampling called the FRU area. Um, and so all the numbers are the sample locations um, around this big area. Notice there's a north arrow. This is really important. If you're going to do a sketch with a map, let's make sure that we actually have a north arrow on it, okay? Um, I don't have, I don't think I have a scale on this, and that's mainly because I have waypoints, so I would know what the scale is. Um, but it is also good to have some kind of scale here. So. I guess one of the things that I want to just step back at on here is what constitutes good field notes. 
Notice that everybody here can read these field notes. Number one, write clearly. If you have chicken scratch, try to write as clean, cleanly as you can. Um, lesson number two, organize by waypoint and always try to note why you're stopping at that waypoint and what you're on, okay? Lesson three, take sketches. Make lots of sketches, okay? Be clear about those sketches because they will help you later on. Um, and I guess uh, that those are the main big lessons. Oh, the other, I guess the fourth lesson is field books are cheap. Uh, don't worry about uh, saving paper, okay? Um, it's, it's better to get good notes uh, that you're comfortable with than it is to have, um, uh, than it is to save pages, right? Field books are cheap. Uh, so again, here's another example of an outcrop. Notice I actually drew the rock hammer here. Uh, and uh, now this is another example of a type of thing that you'll be doing. This is actually what's called a measured section. Um, and so here um, I'm actually measuring a section in what's called the CLCC claims area. Um, the base of the section where we started is at a certain waypoint. Um, base is covered, can't see the stuff below. But now if we look at the actual section here, this one has a scale, zero, one, two, three, four, five. These are meters, okay? These are meters above the base of the section. We have actually measured these using the Jacob staff, which you will be doing later on in class. Um, and what I have here is a profile where it goes out and then it kind of comes back. This is called a weathering profile. The things that stick out more to the right are, um, are more resistant units, what we call cliff formers, so really hard, dense material. And then we have things that tend to be more what we call recessive, that kind of are eroded back a little bit more. We call those recessive, um, which is a term I used right here. Um, and so what I'm doing here is I'm describing the rocks, basically meter by meter by meter, and what features are there. If I take samples, uh, then I make those samples really bold, okay? Uh, if I take photos, um, I make sure those are noted really well, and then I describe the rocks as well as I can going up through this measured section. Um, it's really crucial when you're measuring a section um, to try to get as many notes about what you see on there as possible to make your photo locations clear and to make uh, your sample locations clear if you do take samples. All right, uh, so you will be doing some of this uh, out in the field, and so it's, I think it's worthwhile uh, seeing what a field book or a field note version of a measured section looks like. All right, so here it is continuing up uh, 24 meters, etc. right? Um, so I think that's a pretty good introduction to field notes. Um, different faculty and different geologists do it different ways. Uh, so I'm just showing you one way to organize it, but the crucial things are to be clear, neat, and organized. All right? Oh, and also, they're cheap. Lots of notes is very good.